Well, welcome everyone. Um, quite a few updates to share about the EDM Council. As I go through this update, um, please, uh, you'll have plenty of opportunity to see things you might be interested in following up on. And all you need to do is visit the edmcouncil.org website to get more information. So let me go ahead and uh, just go forward with the uh, first update. There are several people that are on this call today that are new to the EDM Council. So quickly uh, to position what we do and who we are in one screen, this is very nice. The organization was formed in 2005. Uh, it's dedicated to elevating the practice of data and analytics through best practice and uh, research and education. Uh, there are six advocacies. You can see on the left side, everything from best practices, standards, training, research, regulatory engagement and networking. The organization now has grown to be a very diversified worldwide organization, originally a heritage in the financial markets, uh, but today now going into many other new markets and over 10,000 professionals. Uh, it is also a neutral nonprofit trade association. What is one of our largest currencies is the ability to bring all members together and they share and collaborate to build best practices together and to serve the industry overall. Now, some recent joiners, I'm very happy to announce very recently in the APAC region, we've had the addition of ANZ Bank, one of the four pillar banks in Australia, OCBC Bank in Singapore recently came on board, one of the top uh, Singaporean based banks in the region, and also Union Bank of the Philippines has come on board. So uh, very excited for those new additions recently. But in addition to that, you'll see many new banks, and even during the pandemic, we've had many of these logos come on board because data and data programs are even more important. And major companies like Santander, or NatWest Group, and even the Central Bank of the Netherlands. But in addition to that, you'll now see that many new logos joining the council are in other industries. So AstraZeneca, one of the top pharma healthcare companies, S Group, a major retailer, uh, it has joined Schneider Electric, Sustainable Energy. Uh, Mahesh, you just spoke with TBS Motors in India, one of the leading automotive and distributed companies in the world. I'm uh, very excited to have them join as well. And then in the last several months, we've had two major tech firms join. I think you'll recognize the logos. Both Microsoft and Google have joined the EDM Council. Um, and we're very excited about their entry as well. So it's been an exciting time, of course, Many other logos, uh, hard to mention everyone. I think we're running out of space on this page, uh, but all, I think, good news about data management in general. Now, one of the key things the council has focused on has been to offer and conduct benchmarks. Uh, we just released recently the 2020 Global Benchmark, and here are some headlines. First, the survey was distributed and it was very balanced throughout the world with 38% of the respondents in over 300 companies in the Americas, 27% in EMEA, and 35% in the APAC region. 35 countries were responding to this survey, um, about 69% the finance industry, 31% other industries. Here are a couple of really important headlines. We asked a question, where does the data management program report in your organization? Traditionally, three years ago when we did the last survey, it was predominantly 32% to CIO. But you'll notice today, the highest reported area has been to the chief operating officer that often can own both operations and IT, and for the first time recorded in the survey, also the CEO. To us, this is a recognition that data and data management is moving up in the hierarchy of companies and having a broader uh, responsibility. Additionally, another question is what is in scope for the chief data officer? Two other big headlines is that data analytics is now part of the CDO function, either in full ownership of the analytic function or for setting up the sandbox for the major analytics functions for the company. And another is that 42% are now having responsibility for data ethics. So another major headline for everyone in the data and analytic business is that those worlds are coming together in many companies, which is a recognition that good analytics has a high dependency on data management functions as well. Another question that was asked is, are companies using maturity models? We had 50% of companies say we do, and that's a growing list. And then we also asked, what model are you using? 
And good news that DCAM, one of the uh, platforms offered by the council as a data management maturity framework and capability framework has now uh, been the highest adopted model in the global marketplace. So we're excited about that with more work ahead. Now, what does this mean uh, to some of the uh, best practice and framework updates? For those of you that are familiar or have heard the phrase DCAM, it stands for the Data Management Capability Assessment Model. And you'll see what we call the uh, Frisbee on the left. That is the top line overview of the model itself with seven components on running a sustainable data management program. When we had picked up in the survey over the, the recently this year and even worked last year, it was very clear that many of our CDO owners are now taking responsibility for analytics. And good news is this month of October, we uh, are now releasing the analytics component. And the way we did this is through a collaboration. You'll see that we had 10 global companies all collaborate over the last six to eight months to help us add in this. Ah, yes, I'm talking about the Preeti Singh. Yes, I'm talking about the other number. Yes, say. And uh, just one second. And so uh, what that means is that there are now these new capabilities that are being added into the DCAM uh, model. These are the seven top line capabilities. Underneath this are 27 sub capabilities. What does this mean for your company? You can now use DCAM to assess the best practices of your analytics function. Everything from, is it aligned to your data strategy? Is it aligned with your data architecture? Are your models operationalized and established? And do you have the right culture and educational needs for your analytics? And of course, aligned with data quality. This is now a scorable set of guidance that has come from the EDM Council available to members. And anyone that would like to learn about this that's new or considering the council, just let us know. This is also available in a two-day training course, a live training course. And you'll see analytics is added in. And we have courses coming up in the next uh, several weeks uh, and over the next month. We also are doing these courses on a dedicated basis. If your company has five to 10 people or more, we can dedicate a course just to your organization on training for DCAM. And it's a wonderful way to learn the language of data management, understand all the best practice requirements. And if you'd like, you can then use that as an assessment capability for your firm. We also have released a data ethics course. You'll see the picture of Diana Asher, one of the global experts in data ethics. She's in the Bay Area of uh, California and also uh, has worked with many of the top companies in the world on implementing data ethics programs. We now have a two-day course. So anyone that has been challenged by their CDO or is a CDO here and would like their staff to learn about how do we implement data ethics into our company, this is a practitioner's course. Everything from the concepts into how would you go about implementing this into your organization. And there's training courses as well for that. We also have a DCAM portal that's been digitizing all of the DCAM content it's very easy for members to access and ask questions and collaborate with other members and download all the digital materials on DCAM. What I'd like to do now uh, in a moment is introduce one of our partners, but I also wanted to mention that companies that need to use survey tools, we've had one called Palistro on the market for many years, successfully available to members. A new survey tool, so if you are using DCAM to do an assessment, we have a series of third-party tools that can help you gather your data as you conduct your assessment and generate the reports for your scores and how you benchmark within your company and against the industry benchmark overall. So I'm gonna turn the microphone over to uh, Philip Dutton. Uh, Philip is one of the co-founders and leaders at Solidatus. Uh, Philip, do you wanna come on and share with the, uh, everyone on this call a little bit about the digital modeling solutions now available to members? Yes, certainly. Thank you very much, Mike. And um, thanks everyone for, for allowing me to have the time to present. Very quickly, so Solidatus has been working with the EDM Council now for, for, for over a year, working on presenting the, the data that's the data governance professionals, data management professionals need to, to be exposed and to be having transparency across it in their organization. So really trying to enable the correct use of tooling to, to enable those processes as being discussed um, on the call. And so with the, the EDM Council, we've been building a, a series of models which are trying to, to pull data out of the, the legacy that most data analysts have been working in, which is, which is Excel, 
into a tool which, which allows it to, to be creating connectivity and creating that transparency of, you know, how does my DCAM model align with BCBS 239? How does my DCAM model align with something like a GDPR or a CCPA? So, so as Mike mentioned earlier, the, the work around um, the cloud data management capabilities. So that's, that's a big area of focus for the EDM Council and so Solidaris is supporting in, in generating a, a model that will present that, that newly formed um, capability and, and model so that it can be referenced again into an organization so you can determine how it's used. The other big piece of work that's being done is around the, the, the privacy space. So previously the, the GDPR privacy model that, that was created, which links GDPR through its, or its ability to map into policy, map into process and map into to DCAM is being extended. So with some work with some other partners who are we're on the call as well, like, like PwC. So taking and, and introducing things like the India, India Data Protection Act, introducing PDPA, CCPA, LGPD, you know, really extending this to become a global privacy model so that people can actually understand the impact and the, the cross jurisdictional concerns that they have within an organization and map that all the way across into not only their, their DCAM assessments, but through into their internal policies and through into their internal systems and processes. So we have a sort of a holistic view of our organization from regulation through policy, through process, through standard into implementation and systems. And so that work is, has been going on um, over the last few months. Equally, some, some new language versions have coming out. Um, there's an unstructured or um, data um, model as well. So there's, there's lots and lots of work that's been going on in the background and all of this information is available to EDM council members. I'm pleased to say over 130 organizations have, have been using the, the product and using this information, this intellectual property, um, as well as more than sort of 350 um, individuals. So please do take advantage of it. It's, it's available through the EDM council, EDM Connect. Um, you, can, you can link directly in and access the, this information now. Thank you, Philip. Uh, this body of work has been incredibly valuable for members so that DCAM and connect to all of the data privacy work, et cetera. So it really gives that full lineage and high transparency so uh, data organizations can ensure they're preparing uh, for support of things like the India Personal Data Protection Bill, which might be getting through Congress over the next uh, three to six months. So uh, thank you for sharing that. Uh, and we're going to press forward. So a little more, another topic, by the way, that a lot of members have come to the council on is on Knowledge Graph. It's a very, very hot uh, technical area. The big companies like, of course, the Googles, the Facebooks, the Amazons of the world have all uh, been embracing graph uh, and Knowledge Graph technology. Gartner recently in one of our webinars noted that uh, graph is in a top five, top six transformation architecture globally today. So it's a very, very exciting area. The council has uh, opened up uh, the part of our capabilities, which is called open knowledge graph, meaning support industry ontologies. One that's well known is called FIBO, the financial industry business ontology. The council has been curating this as open source for quite a few years. We're now launching an automotive ontology and are making plans to support other industry uh, ontologies such as in life sciences, et cetera. These are companies, you'll recognize many of these logos that have actually built accelerators to their products. So whether it's Calibra for data governance or tools from IBM or Informatica that have been built in to leverage some of the FIBO terms and some of the taxonomies within FIBO, these are ways to bring faster value. And then each individual company has been looking to FIBO to a, a solution with, if they're in the financial industry. We do have training courses. If you would like to learn more, uh, whether you're a business person or a technical person about the business case of Graph down to the enterprise architecture, to an overview of FIBO or hands-on experience, we've actually designed this course to support both business and technical people that wanna see the full picture of what Graph can do for their company. We do have courses coming up uh, on December 9th and 10th for India, APAC, and EMEA. You can register right off of the website. And in the Americas, it'll be on the 19th and 20th. And if you have five or 10 people within your company, we can do a course just for your company. Just reach out to us and let us know. 
Uh, the other thing we've done is a lot of work recently on use cases that drive graph value into solving some really interesting problems. This is one on anti-money laundering and risk detection. We are actually, it's a huge business problem, some really staggering statistics that over two trillion dollars in illegal activity occurs in the financial community, but only 1% is recovered from criminal activity. That leaves the other 99% is still not recovered. So anything that can be done to link information together, public data sources, private data sources to identify any bad actors in the community and also reduce false positives where you might think someone is doing something incorrectly, but in fact they, did, they were doing nothing wrong. We're actually doing a collaboration with a group of half a dozen banks. If you'd like to learn more about this, just reach out to us and we'd be happy to involve you. We're about to kick off a shared lab activity with Graph as well. Onto e-learning, and I know we're covering a lot of ground here. There are now nine information tracks that you can upskill on. Everything from information management foundations, data governance, data stewardship, all the way to business intelligence and a full data science track as well. The CIMP, which is the Certified Information Management Professional, is a globally and internationally recognized training and certification standard for data management and analytics professionals. It's backed by over 50 courses and over 200 hours of e-learning. So you can take one individual course or you can take a group of courses in a track. And a lot of new courses are coming out, including additional courses where we will be offering DCAM, not only as a live virtual train class, but a self-paced e-learning course within this fourth quarter and before the end of the year. The other thing the council has been very busy on and as mentioned is cloud data management. Um, we were approached by the major cloud companies like Google uh, and also major companies like Morgan Stanley and Refinitiv to help launch a work group in the month of May. So about four to five months ago to do and build out an extension of what would be the look and feel of DCAM, but now organized on data management best practices. Uh, we were astounded in the amount of interest. This is the largest work group life to date for the EDM Council over 50 years. There are 50 companies, 160 participants, the top four global cloud companies are on board with Amazon, Google, IBM, and Azure. Uh, we're in discussions with Alley Cloud and also with Snowflake as some new additions on the CSP side. You'll see all these logos and there are more that have been joining over the last several months. The focus of this framework is to accelerate cloud adoption and to do deep drill downs on the industry requirements on things like how do we have data catalogs across the top companies interoperate with each other and share metadata so we can see the big picture by sharing the data catalogs between let's say Amazon Web Services and Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. Those are very important problems that need to be solved to accelerate cloud adoption, especially in a regulated industry, which is the financial industry. This cloud framework will then roll into all other industries as a resource to all industries from the EDM Council. If you'd like to learn more about this or to join this work group, just visit our homepage. You'll see a menu item for cloud. This is another work group that we're also very active in on ESG, which is environmental social and governance data. The major data companies in the world are involved like Bloomberg and Refinitiv, but also the standards bodies. And part of what the council is trying to do is look at the opportunity for consistency and data standards across different data sets around ESG reporting uh, and transparency. And this is another work group that this is an important issue for your company, please reach out. This is also a great time to join this work group so as we build out best practice guidance and more. All of this goes into member forms. I'd like to introduce one of our Asia PAC leaders, which is Surabi Jane uh, from Westpac. Surabi, are you able to uh, turn your camera back on and uh, just give the group a quick update on women in data, one of our very important member forms. Thank you, Mike. Um, I'm so pleased to say that this group only started or this forum was established last year. So we are just about a year old and I'm very pleased to report that we have got over 200 members already. So the objective of the forum, the forum is called Women in Data. However, it is for men and women 
Um, it's an inclusive group and we very much encourage participation from um, both sexes. We have, got, um, we have got a number of global leads covering uh, a number of different countries and uh, keeping the update Asia specific. Mike, if you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So the objective of this forum is to network, support, and promote women and celebrate their successes. And I'm very pleased to report that now we have got all global and regional leads in place. We have got a very strong Asia Pacific team. We are also looking for participation from India. So for those that are interested in joining um, the, the group, please do reach out to any of us. We have got uh, a number of activities that we have undertaken in the last year. We had an event that was hosted in Hong Kong with our Hong Kong lead, Nikita Mo, last year. We have also hosted a webinar with Selena Young, who is a LinkedIn coach. And um, in addition to that, I'm very pleased to, to announce that we have got two additional appointments that have been made to the Asia Pacific Women in Leadership team. So if you go to the next slide, please. And our two new members to the leadership team are Irene Liu. Um, and Irene, I don't know if you've got the, your camera on just to say hello to everybody. Hi, everyone. Good to meet and, you. We've, and we've got Catherine Lee as well, who'd be joining us on the Asia Pacific board. Hi, Catherine. Hi, Rohan. Nice to meet you. Fantastic. So these are two very strong female leaders, and I'm super excited about having them on board and helping us drive this agenda forward. Thank you, Mike. Wonderful. And Sarabi, Irene, and Kat, thank you. Uh, this has been a phenomenally uh, active group all over the world, and uh, we really do encourage both women and men to join up and participate. Uh, we just sat in a, a great networking event that was ran out of the Americas in Canada for Women in Data, and it was a uh, jump on a Zoom call, have a, you know, a, 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 a sharing information and uh, partnering uh, younger executives with some of the senior executives to uh, get advice and uh, you know, support in their roles. So thank you for sharing that. Uh, thank you very much. Good. Um, the another forum we're, we'll be launching shortly and we'll be wrapping up this update segment is the Global CDO Data Leader Forum. Uh, our plan is to launch this in Q1 and do a core group meeting this Q4. So more to come about this. Um, and uh, we'll let everyone know about it. The other thing to share with you is EDM Connect has brought all of our members together uh, on a virtual basis. It's our private community where you can connect to all of the resources of the council, 15 years of library materials, other members throughout the world and work groups. We're actually gonna release a new version, a new upgrade to EDM Connect in the next month called EDM Connect version two with more navigation, easier access to the work groups, et cetera. Um, and of course, for free resources, you can tune in to the resources of all the webinars. We've done 20 to 30 webinars in the last uh, five or six months, and they're all educational on a variety of topics from machine learning to modernizing data governance and more. So I encourage you just to click on the resource tab and you can get educated on any of these topics with the EDM Council partners. And then finally, we're gonna do another data vision, two more to come. One in EMEA, UK EMEA on November 18th and the Americas on December 2nd. So if you have colleagues in the UK or Europe um, or Middle East or the, in Americas, please let them know and they can register right on our website. So John, um, back over to you, uh, lots of updates and people can visit the website to uh, learn more. Uh, thank you for giving me the time to share that with uh, members and guests.